Alright fuckers and fuckettes, since I they're both out at the same time um, but since I was working on this 360 I figured it'd be neat to have them both side by side the 71 CB 350 which was the straight 350 it wasn't the 350 T or E um, it was just a straight CB 350 this one's a CB 360 T um, and they also did make a Hawk version of CM 360, but they didn't actually call it a Hawk, but they still had the CM moniker, moniker in front of it. Um, and the points covers are a little different, but to me the real difference in the bikes is the sound. Um, here's this 360. Even though it was a bigger bore engine, it wasn't as high compression, so it didn't have as much power as the 350. that one. Now to me this this old 350 just this is a bone stock bike everything is factory she's got 20,000 miles on her she's just had her second 10,000 mile service um, the last plate that I had on her was 1979 Now to me that just sounds a whole lot better and it does have more power. It's like three more horsepower. Yeah, let me kick it again. baby girl is 40 years old. She's in 1971. The 350s were higher compression. You know what? I think this would sound neat with just both of them going. Watch this shit. Toe start the bitch. Alright, anyway, that's them two. Neither one of them got warmed up enough to idle right, but I just like the 350 better than the 360. And it's a fair comparison. The, uh, 350 is a lot more stable bike, a lot higher power, a lot stronger block, whereas the 360 they cheapen shit up. And you know what? That shiny side cover might make. No, I got a different. I'm going to put that skull side cover on this 350. Show you what I got for that. Ooh, there's my lighter. Now I can light this damn cigarette I've had hanging out my mouth for 20 minutes. This red here is what I've got for that. I probably got about a month in this. 
I just I still haven't polished it yet. I gotta polish it before I can put it on. I'll put that. Put the lower profile side cover on it. It's already been converted to an electronic ignition up here. It's got a Dynatec ignition. Um, still running stock coils. Uh, they're just like running super coils anyway. It's two really almost the size of car fucking coils, and that was stock. Um, whereas by that time, by that 73, they had gone to two cheesy, regular, chintzy Honda tiny ass little coils. Really high voltage, but no no amperage behind them to really carry a spark. Um, so you had spark, you had plenty of it, it was just weak. Um, and Axels would actually help this one. In the case of the CB350, the stock coils are so high voltage that the Axels can't touch them. Best thing you can do on that is blue streak points or do like I did and switch to a Dyna ignition and just keep the stock coils because they're better than anything you're going to buy now. Um, in the case of this one, set of Axels would do wonderful for it, even some Dynatex. The only problem with Dynatex on these really old bikes is they only last five or six months if you're really riding them every day. Um, I'd really recommend going with the Axels, and this is the voice of experience here. I've had bad luck trying to get them Dynatex to last. I mean, I've even had their coils on their ignitions and still couldn't get a set of coils to last more than five or six months at a time. You know, one of them would crack or one of them would go bad or one of them would overheat and go bad. It's just too much to mess with their coils. They make a damn good ignition, though. Um, and this was actually, the 71 was actually the first year for the vacuum diaphragms in the carb slides. And by 73, they had gone to fucking, those are the same carbs that you'd get off of a CB750, 7, 73 CB750. Um, only they were jetted more appropriately for the engine and they were jetted weak for that EPA bullshit. Whereas this one was jetted so rich you need stock in OPEC because even though it's only a 350 you're only getting 40 miles to the gallon. And it's just got character. I mean it's not loud but it's punchy enough to where you know you know you're on a motorcycle and you still hear it when you're rolling down the road. You feel it too. Whereas this one you feel it, but you don't hear it, and without the sound, it's just not the classic ride. But anyway, that's all about that one. I just figured I'd show you that I broke out the 350. The uh, I'm going to put this one up for sale, probably 14, 1500, just to get it out of the collection. The uh, 360 is up for sale for 3600. Um, but, anyway, they both just about belong in a museum. This one I got a little bit of cleanup, because she's been sitting in storage fucking awful long goddamn time. She, she was in storage in Alabama, she's been in storage in Florida. Factory toolkit, still with her, still in the box, still in the original wrapper. The owner's manual is under the side covers. Even the steering lock works. Alright. Holler chow fuckers and fuckettes later.